fitting that among the first thoughts we heard on that new Jim Mattis book was from neocon Bill Kristol, who is always wrong and never in doubt. Well, the anti-Trump zealots that you just heard were referring to this passage in particular, where Mattis is writing, every skill, using every skill I've learned during my decades as a Marine, I did as well as I could for as long as I could. When my concrete solutions and strategic advice, especially keeping faith with our allies, no longer resonated, it was time to resign. Joining me now is Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, Senior Fellow at the Defense Priorities, and retired Army Colonel Doug McGregor. All right, Colonel McGregor, what's Mattis really trying to do here other than sell his book? Well, once again, he's trying to convince the audience that he's an heroic figure. And it's a pretty tough sell, to be perfectly blunt, because for two years while he was in the administration, he did everything he could to subvert the president. Now he is uh, discussing things that he talked to the president about in confidence, which is the last thing you would expect any former cabinet member to do while the president's in office. Uh, and by the way, he, he keeps trying to emphasize his courage and devotion. Well, where was all that courage for 18 years of self-defeating warfare that cost trillions of dollars, thousands of lives, and has accomplished nothing? If anything, we've cultivated more enemies. That's, that's Jim Mattis. Well, wait a second. Before we get to that, I want to I get back to that issue of the funding of the, of the wars. Um, but I want to say this, uh, Colonel Davis, he actually claims to be old-fashioned. We'll get put up this excerpt from the uh, book. Okay. I'm old-fashioned. I don't write about sitting presidents. So those looking for a tell-all will be disappointed. I want to pass on the lessons and experiences that prepared me for the challenges I could not anticipate, not take up the hot political rhetoric of our day. Well, I mean, it sounds like precisely what he's doing. And, uh, but that's, again, not, not surprising at all, because he is the absolute embodiment of establishment Washington. He he's puts on a good face. He looks good while he's doing it. But the fact is, when you look at his, his, his term as Secretary of Defense, I mean, he really worked hard to keep the status quo in, in, uh, in abeyance and, and not do anything outside, not do anything effective, and certainly didn't want to change anything from this neocon status quo, which undercut President Trump because he wanted to do a lot of things that made a lot of sense. He wanted to get out of Syria. He wanted to get out of, of Afghanistan. And he was thwarted in both of those. And I think that that's uh, something that's going to be his real legacy is that he thwarted the president at every step. He was not the loyal. Well, this terrible. gets back to the original appointment of Mattis, which was a mistake. Trump should not have appointed someone who disagreed with his fundamental non-interventionist outlook. Well, more important, though, Jim Mattis, who obviously was a Clinton supporter, had not voted for Donald Trump. Yeah, that's, that's, right. abundantly I, oh, clear. That's, a, that's a given. He had an obligation, if he's a true professional, to tell the president, look, I appreciate the offer and I wish you well, but you really ought to look for someone who actually supports you, Mr. President, because I don't. He didn't do that. Instead, he became a fifth column inside the administration. So you Everything. think he took the job? to oh, yes. put a monkey wrench into, into... Look at the people that he appointed all over the Pentagon, the people he dragged in. These were people from CNES. These were people from the left. They were Obama people, some going back to Bush, but mostly Obama this and was, Why did they do that? I mean, uh, Colonel, there's, uh, why the bad staff decision? Uh, well, we had Jeff Sessions, who I like. On, I liked as a senator, and I still like him. But he was not the right pick, obviously, for DOJ. Mattis ends up stabbing the president in the back in this non non tell all tell all right well, well I, th I think that part of the part of the issue is that the president is is kind of uh, you know caught up in the stars on the shoulders mm -hmm. and mad dog the, Mattis I, yeah, I, bad, I all, all that, that he's was... a good kind of guy and I, and I don't think that he believed that he would do anything to subvert him and he was you know uh, the 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 stars in the eyes yeah, so, well, let's look just, that, just I want I want to talk about again back to Mattis's own credibility Let's put up this uh, excerpt of this column, and I guess this is also in the book. This is what he said about um, what concerns him most. What concerns me most as a military man is not our external adversaries, it's our internal divisiveness. We're dividing into hostile tribes, cheering against each other, fueled by emotion and a mutual disdain. 
that jeopardizes our future instead of rediscovering our common ground. Oh, God, it sounds like a bad Obama speech. You're right. Well, first of all, when has America not been divided except for five minutes after 9-11 and maybe during the World War II welcome home parades? I mean, we're, de we're, a, we're a representative democracy. It's okay. We figure it out. Exactly. First of all, welcome to a republic. This is yeah. the way we do business. Secondly, he's trying to shift the blame for the obvious divisiveness and tribalism we are dealing with right now to the current president. But these things were there when he became president. We're dealing with decades, legacies of previous administrations, especially the Obama administration. Well, one thing I have to uh, also show you is why he believed we had the trouble we had in the Middle East and these wars that we were fighting. Let's uh, look at this. I had been fighting terrorism in the Middle East during my last decade of military service. During that time and in the three years since I had left active duty, haphazard funding had significantly worsened the situation, doing more damage to our current and future military readiness than any enemy in the field. Now, let's put up the full screen of what all this, this, these wars cost. $5.9 trillion spent and obligated, Afghanistan and Iraq. That's not enough for Jim Mattis. He thinks we should have doubled it. And then things would have worked out. The Christians would still have their, their uh, place in Mosul, and we wouldn't have the refugee crisis. ISIS wouldn't have, have erupted. Iran wouldn't have planted all those mines that our guys, uh, those IEDs that our guys stepped on. What about that? Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because normally failed generals usually point to troops. I didn't have enough soldiers. If I had more soldiers, things would have worked out better. This is the first time I've ever heard a general officer say I didn't have enough money. Particularly, if you look at, at what happened when Rumsfeld became Secretary of Defense, we went in there, Rumsfeld and Bush told the generals, you can have as much money as you want. What I can't provide you are hundreds of thousands of additional troops. They said that. We, we just don't have them to send. But you can have as much money as you want, as many contractors yeah. as you want. There was never any constraint. Wh where has this come from? In fact, if, if anything, he had too much money. And that's a huge part of the problem for us. We have too many people in the military swimming in oceans of cash. You don't have to make any hard Remember decisions. Remember when they were passing out all the cash from the wheelbarrows in oh, Baghdad? Yeah. The neighborhoods in Baghdad, they were literally pass oh, give us some information. Like, hand a stack of $50 bills. And this was insanity. Yeah, Looking absolutely. back on it, it really was insanity. But now he wants to blame shift and then get us up to this point where Donald Trump is the problem? Excuse me, Trump was elected after eight years of a failed Obama administration, followed by uh, the last four years of the Bush administration, where the public turned against these wars. They, well, that's why they elected and, Obama. And that's exactly what, what the, the bottom line is. They're talking about money is shifting away blame from what actually was their failure. It was the plans that they had. It was trying to accomplish the unattainable with military force and then blaming somebody else. President Trump was right to say, this is an unwinnable situation. We need to get out. And he was But they want to go back to the Bush era. They think it's like going to be happy times again going back to 2004. They're in a, I said this the other night, they're in a time warp and they think it's 2004 and they never emerge from it. It's like a time machine and they're just stuck. It's stuck on 2004. Well, there's two problems. First of all, the generals are accustomed to no accountability. And secondly, what have these people done? What is their real background and experience? We've been fighting people with no armies, no air forces, no air defense. We're still in Afghanistan. It's but a, if we spent another abysmal. trillion, we spent another trillion there. We would we would have had it all hunky dory. Uh, great to see both of you. Thank you for being here uh, tonight, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis and Colonel Doug McGregor.